Welcome to St. Giles Presbyterian Church. We are a welcoming community of faith in the heart of the Glebe. My name is Paul Wu. I'm a minister of the congregation, and I will be leading worship this morning. Just a note about the bulletin. Uh, large print bulletin is now available uh, at the back. Uh, so is sermon text. Uh, some of you like to read along as you follow the sermon, so that is also available. Uh, and for those who are joining online, uh, both bulletin and sermon text uh, is available in the church's uh, website. Uh, so that's available for download as well. Uh, looking ahead, uh, next week, uh, May 8th, the Sunday of May 8th, it's also Camp Sunday. So we have invited Mark Hamilton, uh, the director of Gracefield, uh, as a special speaker. And he'll be sharing some of the, the, the ministry at Gracefield uh, and uh, the challenges of the past two years during the pandemic, uh, and also looking ahead, uh, what's happening this summer. So should be uh, an interesting, uh, interesting uh, Sunday. So I'd like to invite you uh, to attend uh, and also, if you have uh, children uh, in your, uh, young children in your family, uh, your grandchildren in your family, uh, and, and I would invite you to consider sending them to Gracefield uh, during the summer. And the week following that, uh, May 15th, uh, it's also, uh, we're celebrating the anniversary Sunday. Uh, and we have a special guest speaker, uh, Reverend Dr. Blair Bertrand, uh, coming to share a message with us. And he is uh, a missionary uh, of our denomination uh, and uh, appointed uh, to the country of Malawi. And uh, so he would have uh, things to share. And I have invited uh, also um, uh, Ethan's uh, father, uh, he is a, a, a pastor uh, and, and minister to a, a number of Malawian families. So invited that congregation to join our celebration as well. Today is also um, the last regular Sunday that our uh, vocalist, Joe, will be with us. Uh, and, uh, and while Joe uh, we, we still do hope to see her, but just not on a regular basis. Uh, she has graduated from her master degree program at Ottawa U uh, in uh, music program uh, in performance. And uh, she's starting a new job at the National Art Center. So uh, we give thanks to God for her um, and, and for her new beginning. And later on at the coffee hour, uh, there's a little treat that we have prepared, so I uh, invite all, you, all of you to also join uh, in this celebration. Please join me in this call to worship, a uh, responsive call to worship that is printed in the bulletin. Sing praises to the Lord, you faithful. We will give thanks to God's holy name. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. We will give thanks to God's holy name. God has turned our mourning into dancing. Let us praise and not be silent. Lord our God, we will give thanks to your holy name now and always. Let us now sing hymn 370, Hallelujah, sing to Jesus.
Morning, guys. How are you this morning? Um, I want to ask you a very most serious question. Um, the question is, have you ever been bullied at school or maybe playground? Do you know what a bully is? Someone that take advantage of you, make fun of you? And some of you are shaking your head, some of you are nodding your head, and or have you ever seen someone being bullied? Yes? Some of your friends in your school? So it seems like one of those common experience that I hope that none of you ever have to experience, but if you do experience it, or if your friend experience being bullied, what do you do? Yes? Alert the teacher. Good, that's a good answer. Do you try to talk to the bully? Maybe. Do you try to fight back? <laughs> I'm gonna nod her head. And, and you know, bully takes many forms, so it's not necessarily physical bully. There's also emotional, you know, they mess around with your head. Uh, and so it, it, it's one of those things inevitably that you will witness or encounter. And I just hope that if you do encounter those, that you will know what to do. And, and Ethan, you're right, alert the teacher. Uh, let the teacher know, let your parents know, and they will help you through it. And sometimes, you know, if even after you have done these and it still doesn't stop, you can pray to God and God does listen to your prayer, and God does answer prayer. And today, in your Sunday school, and you will come across the story of David and Goliath. And that's when uh, the entire nation of Israel was being bullied by its neighbor. And, and they were in the fight, in the war, and this giant Goliath was tall beyond imagination came and challenged uh, Israelite, the people of God, to a fight. And you will learn all about that and how David, being a very young uh, and inexperienced, some people laugh at him as being kind of immature, but David uh, was relied on God uh, and, and to kind of fight off the bully. But you'll learn all about that, and I, I just want you to remember that God is with you, and God listened to your prayer. If you ever encounter bully, you can trust God to help you through it. Okay? Let's pray. Father God, I give you thanks for you listen to our prayer, and you are with us. Help us to know what to do when we're being a bully. Give us the wisdom to do the right thing, to say the right words. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Let us pray. God of the risen Christ and the rising earth, we come before you this day 
giving thanks for all the wonder in your creation, for the tiny perfection revealed in a baby's finger grasping ours, for cherry blossom unlocking, uncloaking uh, to greet the spring, for each rock face warm by wind and water bearing its rugged beauty with your praise. These details lift our hearts to praise you too. So let the details of the story of the risen Christ lift our hearts this day, that we may greet a new week as an occasion to discover him in our midst, making all things new with the springtime of your spirit. And our prayer continues in this unison prayer of confession. God of each and every life, week by week, we lay our lives before you, acknowledging ways in which we fall short of your hope for us. Today, we confess we sometimes find it hard to forgive ourselves. Things done long ago still haunt us. We hear your forgiveness proclaim, yet your promise of a fresh start can ring hollow. Forgive us if we think we are the one sinner who cannot be forgiven. Forgive us when we cannot find the peace you offer. And our prayer continues uh, with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends in Christ, while it is true that we have all fallen short of God's intentions, uh, it is greater truth that we are forgiven uh, through God's love in Jesus Christ. To all who humble, humbly seek the mercy of God, Jesus offers forgiveness and new life. So, be at peace with God, with yourself, and with one another. Amen. Scripture reading today, the first passage uh, is taken from Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6 to 14. And this is actually part of a larger vision of the heavenly throne room uh, in chapter 4 to 5. Uh, and uh, pay attention to uh, the action of the 24 elders. Uh, and the response of Psalm is 30. And we will do it in our usual way, sing the refrain, in the beginning and the end. Uh, and the second reading is uh, Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 15 to 19. This is the third resurrection appearance of Jesus uh, in a scene that I often describe it as barbecue at the beach. Uh, and uh, listen to the question that Jesus posed to Peter uh, and his response. And uh, Roger will lead us in the reading. First reading is from Revelation 5, verses 6 to 14. Then I saw between the throne and the living four living creatures, and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the stroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. 
for you were slaughtered and by your blood you ransomed for God. Saints from every tribe and language and people and nation, you have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God and they will reign on earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature on, in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The responsive reading is Psalm 30, and we will sing refrain one, at least Joe will, at the beginning and the end. drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my God. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. second reading is from John 21, verses 15 to 19. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, I know that I, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you 
and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now sing hymn 632, Help Us Accept Each Other. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Do you love me? It's a simple question asked by Jesus to his disciple Peter in the post-resurrection encounter uh, that was recorded in the Gospel of John, chapter 21. The Gospel writer went into great details, uh, setting up the scene. As usual, Peter was leading the pack. Nathaniel, Thomas, John, James, and two other unnamed disciples were following. They were going fishing. They were tired of waiting, anxious of what was to come, and not sure of their own roles uh, in the post-resurrection reality. And so they went back to the Sea of Galilee, back to their old fishing ground, and picked up their old tools and went fishing. So much had happened already. 
to this band of former fishers turned disciples, could they really go back? Backward from being the fishers of people uh, to simply being fishers of fish? Of course not. Not that night, and for they caught nothing. Then at daybreak, Jesus stood at the shore, gave instructions to them on where and how to fish. The disciples at this point had yet to recognize the man uh, who was instructing them. Nevertheless, they followed. And they caught a huge haul, 153 fishes. And this would be the second time that Jesus provided a multitude of fish uh, to the disciples. You know, the first time being in Luke chapter 5. And it is through such familiar uh, words and act actions that John, so the disciple whom Jesus loved, John came to remember and said to Peter, it is the Lord. And Peter, once again, acting all bold and with haste, uh, drop, cast everything aside, uh, jump into the water, and went straight to Jesus, leaving the others to pick up the catch. Upon reach, reaching the shore, they saw a charcoal fire already set up, with fish on it and bread nearby. You know, seeing that I often refer to as the barbecue on the beach. Jesus then took bread and gave it to them, and he did the same with fish, and he, uh, the disciples uh, at that time ate with the Lord. The gospel writer informs us this was the third time that Jesus appeared before the disciples uh, after he was raised from the dead. It was at that point that Jesus put forward this question to Peter and only Peter, do you love me more than these? And not sure if Peter, uh, if Jesus was referring uh, to the fish and the bread, uh, or the friends of Peter. So Peter replied, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus then said to him, feed my sheep. There is a level of sophistication in the Greek language and that is quite absent in English. The word love in Greek uh, is expressed through multitude of ways. Uh, Euro, the word in Greek, expresses romantic love. Uh, a, a love between two lovers, uh, it, it, it encompasses the physical act of love or, or the so-called erotic love, but it also encompasses the psychological aspect of infatuation, uh, a crush between two young lovers, uh, the sort that we will call love in the first sight. However, the word hero does not actually appear uh, in the scripture uh, in the New Testament, but we do find the word uh, splexna in the Bible the love that comes from the gut. Splaxna in Greek literally means gut or bowel. And, and it is sometimes, uh, when we see this word in the New Testament, it's sometimes translated as affection. Uh, what it really expresses uh, is a, a compassionate love, the kind of love that comes from a deep empathy a real identification with the suffering of others. 
it moves us, physiologically speaking, to tears. So when Jesus wept, seemingly uh, for the death over the death of Lazarus, uh, those nearby saw that uh, as an expression of love. Saying, "See how he loved him," and this was recorded in John chapter eleven. Nevertheless, the word that is most common in the New Testament、uh, that is associated with love、uh, is filial. The kind of love that binds people together. Filial love is the most natural of all love. Uh, between it's a love between friends,、uh, love between kins and families.、Uh, it is the kind of love that society needs in order to function. Without filial love, human societal structure would simply fall apart. Filial love expresses a simple reciprocal truth. I love you, therefore I need you. And the reverse is also true. I need you, therefore I love you. Inwardly, filial is self-preservation, yet outwardly expresses as love. Of course, the most important, theologically speaking. Kind of love in the New Testament is agape. It is a sacrificial love that's mostly identified with God. Agape love is always associated、uh, with the act of giving. For so, for God so agape the world that He gave His only Son. So that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. John three sixteen. God is the ultimate agape. Without God, we would not have known agape. We would not have experienced it, and we would never be called upon to give it. Yet with God, agape is possible in us. Perhaps the most complete description of human agape uh, love uh, can be found in the exhortation of、uh, Apostle Paul、uh, in First Corinthians chapter thirteen, a passage that many of us are familiar. We hear them often in weddings, where agape is patient and agape is kind. Agape is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and to cap it all, agape never ends. It should be noted when Jesus asked Peter, "Do you love me?" He used the word agape. It should be noted equally. That when Peter replied, he replied with filio. Three times, Jesus asked Peter with agape, and three times Peter replied with filio. The gospel writer informs us that Peter felt hurt. After the third time, Jesus asked him the same question. Bible commentators have often alluded to this exchange as Jesus restoring Peter after Peter denied knowing the Lord three times earlier. There's undoubt, undoubtedly some truth to this. 
is one can never belittle the significance of forgiveness and of reconciliation in this exchange. Yet, I am more in the school of thought that Jesus was in fact teaching Peter on how to love. In the most self-denying, self-emptying, and self-sacrificial way, just as the Lord has done on the cross. If you truly love me, love as in agape, then you must be prepared to deny yourself, to empty your own ambition, your own agenda. You must be prepared to sacrifice your vocation or vacation, your comfortable home, your familiar school, your well-paying job. You must be open to be stretched in order to learn and to grow. You may be questioned by those close to you, those who love you. You may even be ridiculed, scoffed as being self-righteous, or having your sanity questioned. You could even face, face persecution from foes and friends alike. You may encounter unbearable loss, even the loss of your own life. Yet the Lord Jesus Christ is with you. Christ is before you. Christ is behind you. Christ is beneath you, above you, at your right and at your left. Christ is within you. With that, Jesus called Peter, and he calls on all of us to simply follow. Some of you met my father a few weeks ago when he and my parents and, and my sister visited St. Giles. And uh, my dad is a, a kind, Smiling man, uh, smiling old man, uh, with short and stocky uh, stature. A few of you have commented on how much I look like him, and I'm glad and proud. However, he wasn't always like that. In fact, I remembered him uh, to be an imposing and dominating presence. He was a well-respected doctor in Taiwan, used to having a band of nurses at his back and call. His temper, impatience, and his fight with mom uh, were legendary. Well, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but when I was a child, I was truly terrified of him. When he finally retired and settled in Montreal, and he treated others all the same, including those uh, in the Presbyterian congregation that my parents helped found it. When I was called to ministry uh, and to serve my home congregation in Montreal, the search committee asked me uh, this pointed question concerning how I plan to deal with the bitter and sometimes all-encompassing fights my parents sometimes get into. I was at a loss as to how to answer such a question. They don't prepare you in the seminary study to answer questions like that. So I, I think I, I mumbled something about being called to serve the congregation and not really able to do much about those fights of my parents. It was during the first year uh, at that pastoral charge, I had to preach a sermon on the passage of Revelation chapter four to five. Uh, and part of that passage was read earlier uh, in our scripture reading. I had explained uh, the vision 
of the heavenly throne room uh, where the four angelic creatures and 24 elders um, and assembled before the one who is seated on the throne. These 24 elders have gotten off their own throne, uh, taken off their golden crown, and prostrate themselves in the gesture of worship, singing, you are worthy, our Lord God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. These 24 elders represent all human powers and principalities yielding before the one seated on the throne and before the lamp who is worthy to open the seven seals, triggering the beginning of the end, the apocalypse. I then show the congregation this particular image uh, as printed in the cover of today's bulletin. Uh, if you should look at that. of what it may actually look like in that heavenly throne. And somehow, the Spirit of God spoke to Dad, moved him to tears. He later confessed to me privately that he had been wearing the crown of pride and prestige for far too long, and he was now ready to take it off and place it before the Lord. He now understands what it means when his own son became the servant of the Lord and becoming the one uh, who served the congregation. And dad was ready to do his part. Now I had not expected that reaction. I, I had not prepared the sermon uh, with him in mind. Yet somehow the spirit of God works in a mysterious way. Dad came to comprehend love as agape. He may not have understood the extent by which he would later be called to give, to serve, and to love. Nevertheless, he knew at that time his filial love for his son uh, would have to yield to a greater agape love for God and to match his action to his words. Do you love me? Asked Jesus. How will you reply? Feed my flock, commands Jesus. How will you respond? in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the following prayers of the people, I invite you to join me responsively when you hear the, word, the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to respond, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we draw near to you in prayer this day, trusting that your love does change lives and your resurrection brings renewal and redemption in the world God loves. So as we lay before you the concerns of our hearts today, we pray that you will draw near to the people and situations uh, we name and bring each the grace that is needed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lay before you, Lord, the concerns we share from the news headline and the many world situations we hope and change changes are desperately needed. We pray for the peace 
in order uh, as the convoy of rolling thunder rolls through our downtown Ottawa. We pray for mercy and consolation for the families and community dealing with the tragic death of the four young cadet officers in the Royal Military College in Kingston. We pray for those who are under heavy burden, having to cope with ever higher prices in everything, everywhere. We pray for the cessation of conflict in Ukraine and for a way out of that senseless war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lay before you, Lord, those who are in hospital or care, and all those who struggle with illness, pain, of health burdens of any sort. We pray for Pam and Nelson, needing to cope with her health. We give you thanks for Stuart as, a re as he recovers at St. Vincent. We pray for Megan as she deals with pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lay before you, Lord, the earth itself, struggling in so many places to maintain its fruitfulness. We pray for the province of Manitoba and Saskatchewan and elsewhere having to navigate the spring flood. We pray for communities in British Columbia making preparation for the summer forest fires. And we pray for all the vulnerable creatures and communities who are finding it harder and harder to live on land sea or sky. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, we believe that you hear our prayers and will be faithful to our requests and concerns. Use us in every opportunity that presents itself to serve you by serving our neighbors near and far. Make us a channel of your peace and shalom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let us now sing hymn 740, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace.
Hi, Paul. Good morning. Welcome to St. Giles. This is May Day and a beautiful morning. Everyone is most welcome to come downstairs for the coffee hour right after the service. The announcements are in your bulletin and are fairly straightforward. Our normal coffee hour by teleconference tomorrow morning. The Presbyterian women are having their May meeting on, on Wednesday at 10.30. Choir practice is now at 7 p.m. Our Bible study, uh, we continue the final chapters of the book of Deuteronomy. Where it is the farewell discourse of Moses in preparation for beginning our study of the book of Joshua a week Friday. We will be doing chapters, please read chapters 31 to 34, but I think we will be reading probably chapters 31, 32, and 34. Next week is uh, Camp Sunday, and as mentioned at the outset, two weeks from today is our 97th anniversary at St. Giles, and we will hope to have a table to lay out some of interesting key documents from our past. So that's two weeks from today. Those are the announcements. As the offering is being collected and brought forward, uh, we remember that our lives overflow with God's blessing in Christ and in creation. So with gratitude for all that we have received, and let us present our offering to God, trusting that God can do new things uh, with our gift uh, and with our lives. Let us stand and sing the doxology. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Let us pray. Our gracious God, you have given us life and enrich it with much beauty and blessing. In Christ, you have given yourself to us. We thank you for how you have loved us and how you continue to love us. So we offer to you a portion of what we have received to share in the work of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Let us now sing, Lord Jesus, we must know you. Uh, this is the lyric is printed in the bulletin and the tune uh, is to 214, uh, 214, O glory, Lord, and honor. Go now in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you from this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>